have the pension guarantee clause, but you have a series of federal pension cases backing up guarantee clauses. And they basically say a contract is a contract and you can't break it. So the entities or the people out there who believe that, you know, let's say somebody passed a law that said everybody who receives a pension receives one less dime in their bi-weekly or their monthly pension payment. Since that's theoretically breaking the pension guarantee clause, there are some people who take what I consider as an extreme position, uh, and they, they say, this is what we were promised, you can't touch a dime of it, and if you do touch a dime of it, we're going to sue. Um, and so th th that's one bright line. Then you have another bright line that says, well, are you vested or are you not vested? Because you can, you can apparently change things that aren't vested, but there are also some people who are arguing, no, 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 you are entitled to the pension benefit that you, you were receiving when you signed your first employment agreement. So when you started 10 years ago, whatever that pension was, that's what, that's what you're entitled to. And there are people that are making all of these arguments legally. Um, they're readying lawsuits. They're telling their, uh, they're telling their members, uh, whether it's TRS or one of the other systems, that we're fighting for you and we're making sure that nothing can be cut. So you have that as one mindset. Well, if, if you begin with that and don't ever pass any law that changes that, there's precious little you can do to avoid uh, A, insolvency of the funds, or B, massive, massive tax increases, the kind of which will literally make businesses flee the state even faster than they already are. Well, um, this is not Civics 101. It's more like Mr. Smith goes to Washington, which I just saw on television a couple of days ago. Uh, you don't know what's going to come out. Uh, two, um, I think that whatever comes out uh, is going to be litigated. Uh, the unions are going to bring lawsuits, and it's going to slow down the entire process, and we'll have to see what, what sticks um, through the litigation. Um, and then I forgot my third thing already because of your question. Uh, it can't be, it, it, it can't be, uh, I am wrong. I tell you it was going to be easy. Uh, it it, uh, it uh, can't, oh, the third thing is I, I, I do think that um, the cost for universities and school districts will be shifted, the normal cost going forward, the going forward cost will be shifted from um, the state to the university communities and to the school districts. And then why can't it be uh, like IMRF? Um, you know, it's why a lot of things in the state don't work um, or they are the way they are. <clears throat> There's vested interests. Um, people don't want to do this. Um, IMRF is, is kind of <clears throat> part, part of the issue, but it, it's kind of off on its own. Um, I just don't see it here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. The, 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 look at, and there's only really, I mean, come on. Uh, come on. Lee remembers that the guy in charge right now, um, we all know his name, is going to determine which bill he's going to permit hit the House floor. Um, the Senate can run their bill, and it will never see the light of day if Mike Madigan doesn't want it to see the light of day in the House. And he'll pass whatever he wants to pass. He's got the votes whenever he can corral his people tougher than just that. I mean, there's lots of intricacies in managing, um, you know, a, uh, a caucus. Lee Daniels can tell you all about that. But what Mike Madigan wants to run is principally what will get run. And it may indeed include this cost shift. Um, there are people on my side of the aisle and theoretically, it's something I could be um, good with and could embrace. But here's my fear about the cost shift. The cost shift, and you hear Mike Manigan and then the governor who took this up. Well, you know, we were never, the state was never in those contractual relationships. We don't know what the New Trier School District cut with their teachers versus the Downers versus Naperville versus the south side of the city of Chicago or some central Illinois community that has none of the money or assets the communities I previously mentioned contains. We didn't cut that deal. You did. So now you live with those responsibilities. And there's some logic and reason behind that. Of course, everything generated in Illinois comes out of uh, Springfield. Um, again, Mayor Grosso will tell you the police and fire rules are written in Springfield for their pensions. They're managed and maintained and funded at the local level. But there's only so much uh, a mayor can do to try and figure out how they make ends meet on those funds. So too with this cost shift. You know darn well Springfield will not be giving these school boards an opportunity to write their own collective bargaining agreements with respect to pensions. No way, no how. So this shift 
by itself. And remember, Bruno mentioned detail. Um, it, you know, uh, we have a, a, a tax gap. Now he'll tell you it's not tight enough and there's lots of good arguments both ways on that, but forget that for a second. PTEL and how it interacts with the cost shift is something that I haven't seen anybody really write down and extrapolate and think through. So there's a lot of detail yet to be determined on what this bill, if the Madigan Quinn cost shift on SERS and teachers actually comes to fruition. And remember, that's two funds out of five. There's three others that still require some serious reformation. What that looks like, I don't know if it's a five bills, three bills, one bill, you know, who only knows? Um, something has to happen. I, I, whatever, and Bruno did make a good point, advocacy groups, interest holders, and, and just the folks often forgot about taxpayers are going to have a lot of interest in what happens. There is no road to kick the can down. It doesn't exist. We're talking about something in the short term. Um, 2020, 2018 um, aren't that far away. And if we don't do something fundamentally different, there are real aspects of uh, you know, these funds starting to bounce checks. And the pension.